In this video, we would like to rewrite Green's theorem in a vector form. So in the last video, we rewrote Green's theorem in terms of a curl of the vector field. In this one, we're going to try to use the divergence. And so let's remember the setup. So I won't go through in too much detail here, but D has to be a Jordan region. Okay. Uh, its boundary is therefore a, let's call it a positively oriented Jordan curve. And so the picture looks something like this. I'll try to keep the picture kind of simple here. But here is the curve C, the boundary curve. Positively oriented means that the region is on the left. So this is our C equals boundary D. And the region itself is then in the interior here, the bounded region. Remember, Jordan's curve theorem says that such a curve divides or it gives us an interior region. We won't get into too many more details. But the other idea here is that this curve C is given by some parameterization. All right, and that's that's where the orientation comes from, the parameterization actually. And at every point along this curve, let's say this one, then we can find the velocity field r dot, okay, of this vector of the curve. And this can be done at every single point, like I said. So there's a vector field called r dot that goes around in the positive orientation. So there's there are way. And by the way, I'm drawing these all pretty much the same length. Um, they don't have to be right. So the speed changes. But what does have to be true is if we take this vector field and we swap it out for its tangent vector field, maybe one unit is just this much, right? And so we can swap out all the way around this curve with the direction of just the, the unit tangent vector field around this curve. Okay, well why am I talking about this? Well actually what we want to do now is we want to uh, reframe Green's theorem in terms of what's called the normal vectors along this curve. So the outward pointing normal vectors. The normal vectors along this curve are going to be the unit vectors that are at every point perpendicular or orthogonal to the tangent vector field. Okay perpendicular to the tangent vector field, so this is called lowercase n for this curve, it's going to be orthogonal to the tangent vector field, um, it's going to be smooth, uh, and it's going to be pointing outward from the region, so pointing away from the bounded region that's bounded by this curve, and this normal vector field, it turns out, uh, if our vector field r, or our curve r, has components uh, that are given by x comma y, then it turns out that the normal vector field, so this by the way means that r dot, so let me squeeze this in here, I almost wrote down r dot to begin with, but let's start, it's good to start with r, so if r is this, then r dot's components are x dot comma y dot, and it turns out then that the normal vector field's components to make it perpendicular or orthogonal at every point and to make it pointing outward, the components of n have to be y dot comma minus x dot. It's easy to see that if you take the dot product of these two, you will get zero, right? That's, that part's easy to see. Um, but it's not, you know, you have to think about it a little bit to get that this is the outward pointing. I'll let you guys work that out. What I've written down here is actually not n. This is what I've called nu in the notes. So this is the Greek letter nu because this is not necessarily a unit vector field in any way. Okay. So the unit vector field that we want to deal with here n, this one is just going to be uh, the vector field n. This is the unit vector field. So this is just going to be y dot over length of r dot because n n and r dot definitely have the same length, right? Because they're built by the, or nu I should say, and r dot definitely have the same length because they're built out of the same component functions. I've just reversed the order and negated one. But the lengths of these vectors are the same. And so to make this a unit vector, we do this, okay? So we make this into a unit vector just like this. Okay, so the next question then is what are we gonna do with this, right? So our n is y dot, uh, over length of r dot, negative x dot over length of r dot, exactly like this. And so remember in Green's theorem, we also have yet another vector field uh, defined at every point along the surface and the curve. So everywhere on D and in particular along the curve. 
And so we have this vector field f, whose component functions are p and q. And we know that for Green's theorem to be satisfied, that p and q have continuous first partial derivatives. All right, so p and q are differentiable. That makes the vector field itself smooth. Um, so what I want to do next is I want to compute the dot product of f dotted with n, okay? Uh, and then let's just see what happens. But f dotted with n, all right? And so here's what happens. Our f is p, q, and our n is, again, y dot over length of r dot, comma, negative x dot over length of r dot, okay? And then this is just going to be um, p times y dot o times 1 over length of r dot minus q times x dot times 1 over length of r dot. And you're probably wondering, what, Justin, why are you doing this? Why are you taking the dot product of f with n? And what I actually want to do is I want to integrate up this path integral, okay? So uh, I want to integrate this as a function. So this is now a function, right? I want to integrate this with respect to ds, just like a path integral. And since we're talking about Green's theorem, that should not be too much of a surprise to us. Okay, but let, let's write out exactly what I want to do. I want to integrate this around the boundary. This function, this is a function now after I've done the dot product, right? So f dot n with respect to arc length, okay? ds, that's a usual path integral with respect to arc length of a function. Um, and then at this point, um, what I'm going to do is substitute in this dot product, but also remember what ds is, okay? So this is then integral of the path of p times y dot times 1 over length of r dot minus q times x dot times 1 over length of r dot times ds, but ds is length of r dot dt, right? Okay, and so now if we work this out, if we work this out, then what do we end up with? Well, all these r length of r dots are going to cancel, okay? And when this gets written out, we end up with integral over the boundary curve of p times y dot dt minus q times x dot dt. All right, we're almost there because what happens here? y dot dt, that's just dy. That's the differential dy. And x dot dt, that's the differential dx. And I can reframe this thing as the integral around the boundary of this, and I'm going to put it back in the right order now, minus q dx plus p dy. Okay, and so this is a path integral of around the boundary, boundary of d, of the vector field minus q comma p dotted with dr. All right, and so now the, the vector field inside this path integral, this vector field f, this vector field now we can apply Green's theorem to. So that was the whole goal, to get something we could apply Green's theorem to. So Green now applies to this path integral. And let's see what happens, right? So as we know, Green's theorem around the boundary of negative q comma p dotted with dr Green's theorem says that this is equal to the double integral over the entire region of, now we have to be very careful because the symbols here have the same letters as the symbols in Green's theorem, but they do not have the same meaning anymore. So in Green's theorem, we have to take the x derivative of the second component of our vector field. So this is going to be, I'm even writing it wrong by nature, right? So dp dx, okay, dp dx from Green's theorem, and then I have to do minus the derivative of the first component, which is usually, um, so we have to do dq dx minus dp dy. So this is usually dp dy, right? So minus what is now d of minus q dy, right? And we integrate this all up with respect to area. But in the process here, we see a minus, that can come out, that's a derivative, right? The minus can come out, that becomes a plus. And so this double integral is now the integral of dp dx plus dq dy da, but this term right here is exactly the divergence of our original vector field f. 
That's the divergence of the original vector field F. Okay, so this derivation is almost done. It's, it's done, basically. We've done the work. But what we need to do now is put it back together to write Green's theorem, right? So under the assumptions of Green's theorem, on one side we have the double integral of the divergence of F, and on the other side, if we go way back here, we have this path integral in the, of the F dot, this is sometimes called integral F dotted with dn, okay, instead of dr, F dotted with dn. And so Green's theorem can now be written in the following form. So with, I'm going to write it this way, with the usual assumptions, we obtain that Green's theorem can be written as the integral around the boundary of our vector field, F dotted with dn now. It's very important to write dn and not dr. This is equal to the double integral over all of d of the divergence of F dA. Okay, so 